Hey everyone, let's talk about how you can take a external antenna with four different leads and get them hooked up to a Verizon gateway. This one here is a CR200A gateway. This is the uh, latest one they have for 5G. There are older ones that are white cubes. There's actually two versions of those. But the downside to um, this one and one of the white cubes is that it does not have a physical SIM card. So you can't take that SIM card out because there is not one to do that and put it in another device. So really the best way to improve your performance for this service is with an external antenna. This one here is the Waveform Quad Pro antenna. They also make a smaller Quad Mini antenna. And this one is designed to go outdoors if you want it to or it can go indoors or in the attic space. It has a couple different mounting options. Um, but what I'm going to show in this video is really the details of taking apart your gateway. How do you do this? Because there are no external ports. These are SMA connectors, but this doesn't have any SMA connectors. However, Waveform includes these little adapters here. These are U.FL adapters that uh, snap onto the board. So we do have to take um, a little bit of work to take the unit apart. It is non-destructive. It's only a couple... Um, screwdrivers or pry kits and a torx bit and you can take it apart so that's what i'm going to show here today and how you hook it up as well as which ones there's actually several u.fl connectors but you only need four of them and so we'll go through those details in this video so if you have any questions as you're watching along please do put a comment down below i do read those and try to answer them and of course consider hitting that like button for this video and also subscribing to my channel to get more of them like this Okay, so Waveform actually has guides to do this, so I'm actually following pretty much their guide on how you take this apart and, and do this. And so I'm going to switch camera views here to give you a better view, um, since you probably don't want to watch me the whole time. You'd rather see what I'm doing. All right, so the first place is there's a couple hidden screws. Uh, you can see right where it says rating 12 volts. That is where there is one, and now this plastic is pretty tough. But well, you can get a, a screwdriver or a knife in here and you can kind of cut the way out of it so you can pry it back and see how to get your, uh, your little screwdriver in there. So once you cut the uh, tape back you can get in there with a little screwdriver and you can pull out that screw. The next screw is down here by this SC logo. Okay, there you go, you can see it in there. Alright, honestly that's probably one of the hardest parts of just getting to in those um, two places. Now we're going to pry out this um, bottom piece. This bottom grill comes out from the side of it. So you can buy actual pry tools if you want to be proper. I'm going to use the crude method which is just a screwdriver. Um, I'm going to risk marring up the, uh, the plastic by doing that. But I really don't care because I'm not going to use this. This is actually a purchased, um, a used purchased one, so I don't have to return it. So you can see you can just pry it up. Normally two pry tools is best to have so that you can keep it from popping back in again. You kind of get one side going you can just kind of go around and pry it up it's a little easier with time there we go So now in here are several black Torx bits. It's a T10 that you take out. Now I found this little Husky kit um, really helpful. It has pretty much everything I need in it. It is cheap and 
uh, not like super sturdy, but it does everything I need, and I just keep that down here with me for all this stuff. So now we just take out, I believe it's four of these Torx bits. Okay, once you have that out, you should be able to shake out the case from the, um, the black insides. There we go, so now they are separate. Alright, so now we can see on the side of the gateway we have our U.FL connectors. That's what all these ones are here. And really small print, but just up here you can see it says J1 on here. Up here it says J4. This one says J5. That one says J7. So they are labeled on here, and that's what we want to reference is the J numbers. There are other numbers like S's and um, XT's and that kind of stuff, but the J is what matters. So let's uh, look at the instructions to see which ones we mess with. All right, so I'm cheating, and I'm just looking at the waveform guide here, and you can see they have a picture of this. And so for most people, it's going to be J1, J2, J3, and J4 is the ones to mess with. Only if you're connected to band B2 and B66 would you use J5 instead of J1. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to show you how I typically use a flathead screwdriver. And I just come up underneath the, um, the wire. First I'm going to free it from the back uh, wire hold. But then I'm going to help make sure I pull it straight vertical off of there. Even though your screwdriver can't get underneath it. Um, it has to go on the back side. I hold it down and then I kind of twist the screwdriver up to get it to pop vertical off of the pin that's on the board. And that's how I very gently take these off. Um, so that's something to always pay attention to is um, be careful because you can break them for sure. That's J1, J2, the white one here is J3, J4 is the green one. Okay, so we got those off. So now I have all of my waveform supplied little pigtails, and before I start hooking them up, what I really want to do first is run it through the bottom of the... Um, the grill here because that uh, is going to go on and I can only get the small ends through so I want to make sure to go ahead and get that done here first. Alright so I ran them through the grill here like this first and then I will start to do the attaching and I do want to label these as well. Alright so now I kind of put them on the, uh, the same way where you want to just make sure that you are perfectly um, up and down. You're not coming at us at an angle and you aren't trying to uh, force them on. So I kind of find it where they self-center because it is a round thing and then I just try to work it on and see if I can press it straight down if it starts tilting at an angle I stop and retry. Okay. Now if it hurts your hand too much, you can use the flat end of a screwdriver bit to press it on. But again, you want to be careful with the pin.
All right, so those are on there. Now I just want to label them so I can keep track once I put it all together which um, wire is which connector. Okay, so now I have all of my connectors on. I've taped away the other um, antenna, the stock antenna cables just to keep them out of the way so they don't touch. And then now it's basically ready for it to uh, start to go back together. So I can just slide this cover back over. Obviously you want to make sure that your um, wires don't uh, get pinched or they don't get pulled out as you go through that motion. The only thing I notice is that the lights that will shine through the gray plastic kind of get stuck. So I just pry up on that a little bit as I slide it in. Okay, so now it's slid in and I can put the Torx bits back in. Okay, now you don't even have to put these back in if you really don't want to, but I'm going to do it just so I don't lose them. Alright, there we go. Alright, so the antenna has labels from waveform. It's 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the recommendation for most people is to take your J1 and connect that to 1, but then connect J3 to 2 and then J2 to 3 and then J4 to 4 so that will work for most people if that doesn't work well for you um, there are some alternatives you can instead of using J1 from the gateway you can use J5 and that J5 would still go to the antenna 1 port on the antenna so let's plug it up and just see how much my antenna signal changes alright so I went up to my third floor loft and that's where I typically have all of my gateways and that's normally where I get uh, close to my best signal as well without the antennas and then I have antennas typically in my attic about 20 or 30 feet away from them and so I did the baseline with the stock before I put the pigtails on and that was a 4G LTE signal of 102 dB and a 5G signal of 108 dB so and that's all that the stock gateway gives you for as far as information. It doesn't tell you which band you're on. It doesn't tell you your signal to noise ratio, all your other stuff. It just tells you that signal strength. Okay, and then once I installed the pigtails and I put it on the waveform uh, quad pro antenna in the attic uh, with 30 feet of cabling connected right here, then that brought me from the 102 dB on 4G down to 91 dB on 4G. And from the um, 108 dB on 5G down to uh, 99 dB, or actually all that's negative 99 number. So that is a significant improvement. That's what 11 dB and a 9 dB improvement uh, for both of those. And then since all that dB stuff is in the log scale, I think every 3 dB more, uh, more or less is about doubling of the signal strength. So that's several times better signal strength that the waveform is giving you versus the stock internal one. Now I did not do any speed test uh, for a couple reasons. One, as I mentioned earlier, I actually bought this as a used gateway specifically so I could take it apart. Um, and so it's not actually an active um, service or SIM in there for me to do the testing, but it's nice enough to still let me log in and uh, see the signal strength there. The other thing to note um, that's fair to note is that Verizon does cap or throttle their speeds based off your plan. If you have their highest plan, which I do on my other uh, Verizon gateways, I have their 5G Home Plus. 
it caps it at around 300 megabits per second download and about 20 megabits per second upload they have changed those numbers a little bit over time uh, so you might have to check your terms of service to see where you're at but know that a antenna won't uncap or unthrottle your speed there it will just help you get to that so if you are getting consistently already those speeds then an antenna by itself is not going to um, make you go higher than that but um, if you have any questions put them down below and I'll be happy to answer them and also check out my channel I have tons of videos about 5G home internet home Wi-Fi tech tools the outdoors all kinds of stuff so thanks for uh, staying tuned till the end and I'll see you next time